Yesterday I mentioned that after Paul opened his letter to the Philippians, he expressed his love and thanks to them. Then he wrote in Philippians 1 and 7, So it is right that I should feel as I do about all of you, for you have a special place in my heart. You share with me the special favor of God, both in my imprisonment and in defending and confirming the truth of the good news. We concentrated yesterday and today for a few days on the phrase he uses, you share with me. It is a combination of two, two Greek words, son and koinonos. It literally means we jointly partake or share in something together. Paul mentioned five things that we share in common. We share the same heart and passion. We share the same special favor of God. We talked about those two things yesterday. Then he says we share in Paul's imprisonment, in defending his faith, and in confirming the truth of the good news. Today I want to focus on the fact that Paul said the Philippian people shared in his imprisonment. He wrote, you share with me in my imprisonment. Now how in the world is that? They were not in Rome, much less in jail with him. How is it then that they shared in his imprisonment? Well, as Christians, there are times when we're all called on to suffer for the cause of Christ. Sometimes it might show up in our telling the truth when telling a lie would produce a more comfortable situation for us, at least in the short term. But we're committed to telling the truth and we suffer for it. Sometimes we take a stand in a business environment for Christ or for Christian business principles. And maybe it costs us a promotion or a sale. Sometimes living for Christ can keep you out of certain social circles, certain entertainment situations. People sometimes are threatened by your Christianity. Paul had spoken publicly and openly about Christ, and it cost him his freedom. Now he was in jail. When we are called on to suffer, you and I, one of the ways we endure it is to remember that we are not isolated. We're not in this journey together. We are a part of a larger family of believers who suffer together. We draw strength and encouragement from each other during difficult times. Paul said he found strength and encouragement in the prayers of the Philippian church. That's how they were in prison with him. Their financial support, their prayer support, their written encouragement, allowed them to share in what he was going through in prison. And Paul said he could endure the suffering he faced because he knew Christ was always with him. However, he also knew he was a part of a family who would stand with him, even though they were miles and miles apart. When you and I face difficult situations in our lives, we need to remember we are not alone either. We have Christ, but we also have our large family of faith. They provide comfort and encouragement to us. On several occasions, Paul reached out in his letters for that kind of support. In 2 Timothy 4.21, he said, Do your best to get here before winter. In 2 Timothy 1 and 4, he said, Recalling your tears, I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. In 2 Timothy 4.9, he said, Do your best to come to me quickly. He also tells us in the book of Hebrews that we are not to neglect the meeting together, our meeting together, as some people do. But we are to encourage one another, especially now that the day of Christ's return is drawing near. One of the truths we learn today is that we are not called to be long rangers in our faith. We're all in this boat together. Being a part of a local church family is essential to Christian development. We are to encourage one another during difficult times and times of suffering. Let me encourage you today to find somebody that you can share in their pain and encourage them along the way. Here's a great thought for today. I am a part of a family who shares my life. Here's a great prayer for today. God Help me to be concerned not just about myself, but about others as well. Have a great day and God bless.